Hello, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, the Honda Karen and the Honda Vision meet again. We recap about the great PTSD UK charity trip. And not just that, we eat pie at the world famous Pie Eating Bench. Cue the intro. <laughs> Here we go, we're going to go and get some fuel mate. Ok mate. Um, just before we set off on this trip, but I need a favour. What? <laughs> There's no centre stand. So I need, I, I need you to hold the bike for me. I'll turn the engine off, because last time you did it you, you made me almost crash. Um, I'll just put some fuel in. Why haven't you got a centre stand? I'll tell you about that in a minute. God, we're all right idiots now. Just, you love, you love the vision, so for you, you know, this is a moment that you get to touch it. I don't like touching it. It's the best bike in the world. It was wrong. It feels a bit dirty. Is it? Yeah. I'm not really, I don't really look at my bike in a sexual way. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any money? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if I brought my wallet. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> That's my couch you've forgotten. Yeah. Here you go, two pound eighty eight, mate. Definitely. I know. Just gonna um, just see if I can get one of those quick loans. Just so just stand there holding your bike. Well, I pay, yeah. God. I'll be back in a minute. Oh yeah. Right, let me tell you the quick story as the centre stand as we go to buy the most world famous pies in the world, so we can have a little chat at the world famous pie bench. Go on then. So. Basically, you know when we were on the charity trip? Yeah. And then there was that tiger that came at me, running out into normal leg, and I kicked it in the face, and then it started gnawing on the uh, centre stand? No. Oh. Okay, do you remember the when I was like basically doing the racing bends at around 100 miles per hour, and there were sparks coming out of the bike? Do you remember that bit? No. Okay. Well, you remember that... The, the centre stand that was dragging along the floor and an 11 out of 10 job that I'd done trying to fix it before we went. Yeah. Because it kind of dragged all the 220 miles and scraped around every single bend, it pretty much is bent to the point where it's not holding up the bike. Right. Um, so I've taken that apart and I ordered a brand new centre stand that arrived literally a few days ago. Right, so you've ordered the wrong one, is that what you can tell me? Yeah, so I ordered the wrong one. So in my <laughs> brains of wisdom, I tried to grind it to try and make it fit. And it still didn't fit. You're going too quick again, you need to slow down and enjoy this. And then um, then on top of that, um, they don't seem to make a centre stand for this certain bike at all. So right. what I've had to do is, I've had to, by no choice whatsoever, um, I've had to order a really old, old one off online that hasn't arrived yet. Um, and I didn't want to put the old centre stand on because it's just knackered and bent to pieces. So that's why I haven't got a centre stand. And that's why you are now rehired as a side as a sidekick because I need someone to hold my bike up when I'm doing things. Oh, great. So unfortunately, I know I advertised for a replacement, but um, and there's been millions, by the way, of applicants. Yeah, how's that going? Oh, millions and millions of applicants. There's so many at the moment, we're just at the paper sift sort of stage. So, you know, you've got to keep doing your duties until that moment that we get to the final stage and somebody becomes victorious. Right, well, where are you going to get somebody soon? Like I said, it might take a while, even might take a few weeks. All right, okay. Well, we've got to sort it out. Yeah. Well, like, here we are then, Desborough Fish and Chip Bar, the world famous Pucker Pie Pie Place. Now, People have travelled thousands of miles, mate, to come here. And even, let's even look at, like, Hoppo. He travels hours and hours just to buy his pine chips from here since he's discovered this is the best fish and chip shop in the world. Right. So your job is to go and get us a steak pie, mate, and a small chips and a small curry sauce, please. Is that because you can't get off your bike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a lord, so, you know, I shouldn't need to get off of the golden seat.
right. You got the world famous. Absolutely. You're there for a long time. Talking about wives, aren't they? Talking about wives. Not the bikes. Like the pies. The bikes. You're telling them that we uh, that we should get the pies for free. Because we're world famous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Didn't work though. I saved your glove. Thank you. But your helmet fell off. It's not my fault you've been in a silly place, is it? Thanks. All right, mate. Right. You ready? Go. Just be careful because the power of this beast is strong. Take me to your special bench. I will take a special bench now. Last time I visited there, um, I was expecting to see a plaque put on there from the locals because, of course, it's now a national treasure. It's a world famous bench. Um, people are travelling from around the world to eat pie at this bench. Now, I believe that this. Oh, hello. Hey, I've been reports to. Uh... <laughs> Two pie people. Two pie people. So, yeah, from what I've been told, though, that um, the actual villagers themselves were paying for an old uh, sort of metal man to carve, just with a toothpick, the helmet head well famous benching. Really? But I heard that the village itself ran out of funds to make this happen. They only got to the, they only got to the helmet part, never head. So I believe that a world famous king of the entire world, soon king of the universe, is um, actually contacted them and out of his many billions and zillions of pounds has actually now funded the plaque to be finished. Right, is this a story that you're making a pattern? No, it's not. So, the, you know Steve Bolter, the king of the world... Yeah. Yeah. He, Everybody knows him. Exactly that. That man apparently has funded nearly one point two million pounds to make this plaque happen. And today will be the first day we get to see it. Right, okay. Leave it when I see it, but it's gonna be good, it's gonna be epic. You're just jealous again. Now, lots of questions need to be asked. Yeah. Since, since returning from the trip, have uh, you and Karen spent the night together? Uh, maybe not the night, but we've had uh, a few, you know, few things, a few special moments. And I can already see that you've uh, taken your many accessories off of the Karen. Yeah. Um, is that because it goes faster without them, or...? Uh, well, she's not overlanding anymore, is she? So there's no point taking her out to wait. I thought, uh, she just looks better without, don't she? I thought we were going to South Africa next week. No. Oh, disappointing. So we're here. The Honda Vision is having a little rest against the tree because uh, the sidekick has refused to hold it. What's really rude why I eat my food. And obviously the Karen's there. But we're here to hopefully witness for the first time this plaque that everyone's come together to make happen. You know what I mean? This is a big moment. Are don't you ready? Believe, I don't believe you. I'm ready. Let's, let's, let's come on. Let's have a look for the plaque of helmet head gloriness. Well, there you go. How amazing is that? This moment that, that that bench has now become obviously world famous and being appreciated by so many people. I mean, what do you think? Come on. I don't believe it. Are you sure you didn't come down here last night and put that on? No, why would I do that? Dude, you need to understand the effect we're having on people's lives. This is, this is a big deal. Yes, mental health awareness day as well, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. So, if you want to come here, pipe well, just here. 
to the world famous pie eating helmet head bench this is the place to come i'd like to thank all the villagers coming together under of course the king himself steve bolter i appreciate it thank you Why, take, why have you took the top off the pie for? Because this is how you eat pie. You put the chips in the lid. So you make a chip sandwich with a lid. Look at that. And then you eat the contents and you put the last of your chips in your empty shell and then you eat that. That's how you eat pie and chips. Now what I want to point out is, that again, is wrong. That's like a 10 out of 10. What you do is, is you nourish every single mouthful. And of course, you eat it with a fork and you enjoy the pastry and the pie together. Don't ruin the pucker. Don't ruin the pucker. It's wrong. Right then, so, for us, we're about two weeks after the actual charity trip itself. Yep. So we were hugely lucky. We had, right, a load of people come together to help buy that bike because a charity trip would have happened but it would have taken a lot longer to happen it happened quite quickly so we had a lot of people come together to just fund that bike yep and then not just that of course then we were lucky enough to have three papers write stories about us doing what we we're about to do and obviously we had the harbour mail the evening telegraphed and the world famous MCN. MCN. Yeah. That's a massive How deal. That? Absolutely fantastic. We had the charity themselves do a piece on it and thank you us personally for the efforts that we were doing. But on the day itself, when we first started this whole journey, where we travelled many miles to buy our bikes, I mean, can you believe that today that when you when I mentioned this, you were going to end up buying your your original lover, your Karen back. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Is that a yeah or no? Because that was a lot of yes and no. No, I didn't think I'd end up... <laughs> it didn't even cross my mind until I started getting desperate for a moped and then I suddenly thought... And I've, yeah, and now we're back together. Tracked her down, stalked her, looked at her through a shed window, all lonely. I mean, were you dreaming about that moment of ever getting to stroke Karen again? Well, to be honest, I never thought I'd see Karen again, so... Yeah, but now we're back together. So, basically, have you fallen back in love with Karen? Yeah, I do love Karen, yeah. What's, I mean, the, what's there not to love about Karen? You basically took her apart and you put her back together and you did it in style. Now, let's go be honest, when you got that back, it wasn't running properly had old fuel in it you would be lucky to even do 20 miles an hour and then you basically cued the 18 music in the background put a big chain around around your neck <laughs> and you got you know you got out a big sparky thing making loads of sparks and you made her basically into a race machine i mean you've got to be honest at a 50 cc that it is quick yeah and it's getting quicker and quicker <laughs> so i just want to know where you've got the brute hidden to go into the engine She's not running on brute. She's just, she's just a Karen. That's all. That's all there is to say. She's an angry Karen. She's got her anger back. You know, she's 50 cc's of furious anger, Karen anger. Yeah, she's, she's beauty. Well, she did well, mate, and she made that trip. So talking about trip, I was almost quite surprised and humbled that that morning when we set off. We had another hipster, yep. Fentor, yep. Hoppo, Steve Bolter come with us on bigger bikes to ride alongside us. Mm. To keep, and they kept us safe. Fentor kept the traffic out. He had massive lights on. Steve Bolter kept holding back to make sure that people were going right around us. It was absolutely amazing. Personally, I was like, and, and they didn't, you know, the most of the, the way there was, it was, we were going slow. We we're 25 miles an hour. <laughs> And those guys stayed with us the entire time. Yeah, no, it's amazing that people take the time out of the day to come with you on these stupid, you know, 
think of these stupid things and people come along and to join in. No, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Now, what was your favourite moment of the of the whole weekend, the whole charity trip? What was the moment that was your one thing you were trying to say, I'll never forget that? You know what? I think riding back on the Monday, knowing that we'd achieved what we wanted to achieve, and the sun was shining and we were putting it along along those back roads, and it was just great, just 30 mile an hour and we were just having a good time and although it was the way home and it was kind of over but it was just kind of knowing that we'd achieved what we'd wanted to achieve and the sun was shining we'd been very lucky nothing had broke down you know the sun we'd had good weather and it was just it was just nice just putting it along enjoying the ride the ride home it was great you know we got hoppo was still with us batman joined us and yeah that, that i think that was my best bit yeah it was lovely that that people, and especially, again, Batman, Bruce Wayne, stroke, Simon, he came back, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He came back, I mean, he must have been out rescuing people all, all night, yeah. um, and pretended he slept on the beach, because you could quite clearly see that he was quite well bruised, he'd obviously been in a lot of battle, saving everybody in Skeg Vegas from all those crabs. I'm sure he had a sandy crack. He might well have, yeah. For me, my favorite moment, and it was my favourite moment for me personally, was taking a 50cc Honda Vision with an accidental tyre <laughs> to the sea, to the end of the world, to actually get across. Because, I mean, I saw you attempt it and I just thought, I'm not going to give up. And I always say, never say no and, you know, never give up. And I was like, I knew, I knew regardless that you'd come along and pick the bike up and carry it there if I couldn't make it. Yeah. And, but I wanted to do it. And at the end of the day, it got to the sea. And it's just one of those moments you sit there and go, I can't believe I've ridden this little scooter, this ancient scooter, to the end of the world. And it's just one of my moments. I was out of breath, I could hardly speak. I was overwhelmed and it just made it. And that was like, and I wanted to make it to the end of the world. You see all these cool people riding along the beach. That's a vision. And it made it, and it made it to the end of the world. Now I know a lot of people, and we did, we wanted to raise a thousand pounds. Yep. We desperately wanted to raise a thousand pounds and you know it's been national press it's been everywhere and it's all over facebook you can google the trip that we did but right now in the world there's a big thing going on and i can't really talk about it because youtube doesn't like it there's a big thing going on and people are losing their jobs and even worse things are ha like happening but the one thing is is that we've had 41 amazing people have donated towards what we did right and we've currently raised 948 pounds yeah okay it's amazing it is and the thing of it is is that yes i want to get to a thousand pounds but with what's going on with people companies closing all sorts going on in the world we've helped not me and you but all those people that donated all those people that came along with those newspapers that wrote about it the articles that went all out have managed to raise that and that, that's a big help to a massively underfunded charity now i'm not going to stop the just funding i'm going to leave that going i'm not going to talk about the charity trip after this until we do something else but at the end of the day i'm just want to say thank you to everyone for donating what they've donated and what we've both you know both of us and all those people have managed to achieve because we've helped people and you know sitting here on world mental health day and being able to talk about it and knowing that we've done some good all of us is pretty incredible to me yeah no it is isn't it now the charity trip's done and obviously we're going to go for an awesome ride on these bikes and have a giggle but karen your you know your darling your sweetheart your steed as well it's been an awesome machine what is your future plan for probably one of the best ever little mopeds in the world. Well, <clears throat> I did say originally, that when we get back, I was gonna sell Karen. At the minute, I'm gonna try and keep her for a bit longer. Um, but I think inevitably, eventually, I will have to put her up for sale. Just purely because, obviously, going and doing these adventures and everything that we do, it all costs money um, and it all comes out of our, you know, we have to pay for it ourselves, um, you know, and I, eventually 
oh, for, you know, to, for us to keep going and doing these adventures, I will have to put Karen up for sale, you know, to put back into the pot so we can then continue and do other things. But at the minute, for the time being, I'm going to keep hold of her and just ride her a bit more, you know, until until needs must. So, okay. But if anybody wants to pay over the odds and give me, <laughs> you know, like a million pounds for Karen, then yeah, I'll, I'll sell her now. But we'll see. Just, just so I'm clear, you're not selling her because you think she's absolutely awesome. But for a million pounds, you would sell your sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the vision isn't going anywhere at all. Now, I've obviously been contacted by some of the biggest motorcycle museums in the world, asking if they can display her. And I've, at the moment, I've just said no, because I feel we've got some more adventures to have on these. And we've spent a lot of time and a lot of money, and they're MOT'd, they're taxed, they're insured, and we've got at least the rest of this year, maybe early next summer, just have some fun do some more videos on them, think of some crazy stuff to add to the channel. And um, for me, my dream is, is eventually I'm gonna have a studio built. Um, I'm probably gonna move ha home soon and it's basically gonna be a, a glorified shed. Um, but I'm gonna have some things in the background, some stuff from the channel. And a lot of people put money in towards this vision. So it's not going anywhere at all. It's gonna become another part of the channel. Um, so that's my plan for the vision itself. But like I said today, we've not ridden these since that charity trip. No. So today they need the ride of their lives. They, we need to say thank you to them for their awesomeness. I'll tell you what we haven't mentioned. What's that, mate? The big basket competition. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, who do you reckon won? Well, you probably, as usual. Well, you see, I'm a little bit upset because you've won that as well. You're joking? No, you won it. Really? Yeah, only just, but you won it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that time it's that time where i just want to put a little montage together because these two motorcycles here they have literally done that 220 mile trip and they've helped raise this money as well so i just want to say a massive thank you to every single person that's donated 41 people has been incredible the guys that donated towards me being able to fund that bike in the first place and not just that the guys that came along and helped us follow this dream, get this journey done to raise this money. So ladies and gentlemen, for the final time, what I want to say is, I want to give you the Honda Vision, the best motorcycle in the world, and the second best, the Karen. Here we go.
go what an absolutely excellent excellent thing that we all did together we raised nearly 950 pounds for one of the most awesome charities in the world now i just want to turn around and say really quickly again thank you so much to everybody that put their hard earned money in, do in donations towards getting that money to where it got to we really appreciate it and it has literally rocked my world it's so absolutely amazing but i just wanted to do this little video to say thank you to so many people all the people that helped fund that motorcycle not just that all the people that came along to make that adventure the massive huge adventure it was the newspapers the press the people that got behind it it's been absolutely incredible and it's been an honor an absolute honor to ride a little honda vision scooter all the way to the end of the world it has been fantastic so thank you absolutely to everybody who's been a part of this i want to say a massive thank you to my patrons as always they're the guys that send me money as well every single month to make these videos and this channel keep going the way that it's going i really appreciate it, guys you guys are absolutely awesome and if you are interested in buying some of the helmet head merch like the helmet head mug that makes everything taste a zillion times better then please look at the links down below there's one to patron site there's one to the shop where you can get your t-shirt mugs and even nice jumpers coming up for winter so again i just want to say a massive massive thank you to all the support that we've had that trip really does really does rock my world it's so important and we've raised such a decent amount of money for such a great cause so again thank you so so much and as always until next time eat pies ride motorcycles be happy see you in your next adventure take care for now bye bye